giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. So now we're going to start our AMA portion of this show. So we've got Viperbots Hydra. For those of you who are just tuning in, Viperbots Hydra is Team 7161, and they're from Texas, and they're a part of the Viperbots organization. They've been one of the top teams in Texas for ever now, and um, they work with other teams, including Quad X and other Viperbots teams in one location. So can you guys give us a brief history of, Vi of the Viperbots program? Yeah, so for sure. Viperbots was founded in 2010 with uh, 4545 Ouroboros and 4546 Snakebite. And so it originally started sort of as like a club, I guess. But ever since that first year, it's become more of an organization, expanding to now being 10 FTC teams and one FRC team. Oh. Wow, 10 FTC teams. That's insane. Yeah. Um, how, like, what are some of the challenges of being like in such a large program? Um, I think one of the challenges for sure is really like differentiating yourself. Like, I mean, you're operating under a single name, um, you know, under Viperbots as one of the 10 teams. And so one of the big things every year is just making sure that each team is really unique um, and is really like standing out themselves from all the others, um, all the other sister teams. And yeah, so and I guess I... that can always be a challenge. Yeah, and then sort of to add on to that, there's also the challenge of, so we work in the same shop, right? And so you have like the same material. So sometimes there's a limited amount of routers, limited amount of 3D printers and things that you're just sort of organizing with that, managing signups to make sure everyone has an equal access and equal use to those parts and equipment, I would say. So you guys are all in the same room together, all 10 teams in the yep. same yeah. shop? Wow. Yeah. That's and like 100 team. possible people and all team. in the same area. Do you guys yeah. take shifts then? Uh, no, it's, it's a lot of just first come first serve, just stake <laughs> out your land. Um, oh, luckily how they're so, building. Hmm? How many fields do you guys have? Like how many fields do you get every year? Um, previously we had two. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember if that's changing or not. Uh, we have a new facility that's being constructed right now, actually. Oh, wow. Um, it was hopefully going to be done by end of August in time for the school year next year, but obviously with COVID, um, that has changed and we don't, we're not exactly sure when that'll be finished. Um, but I think... I think they should still have two to three fields for all of our FTC teams. And they also will have a full size FRC field for the FRC team. Wow. Awesome. Uh, audience, if you have any questions, make sure to tag at first updates now in the chat and we'd be happy to answer or ask Fiberbots, uh, Hydra, these questions. Um, next, our question is how do you guys get rookies involved in your program? Yeah, so we get rookies involved in multiple ways in our program. So I feel like the main way a lot of people get involved and sort of how I got involved is that I have a friend who's already in robotics and they keep telling me all these cool things about the competitions, about the challenges and how fun it is. And like that personally made me really interested and want to try it out. And then also sort of, I think at our school, robotics is not really treated as like, as like I said, a club, it's like more treated as of a sport. So we get lettermans actually. With like a big like first patch and like the Viperbots logo, so like if you wear that around school, like people cool. ask like, "Hey, what's that, man?" And like you can tell them and you can sort of spread that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And we also have like a power like we have like two screens in sort of the main hallway at our school, which just shows photos of us at competition. Say like if you want to join, oh, like here's the application and like. Yeah. So with wow. that, do you yeah. guys have? Do you guys get a varsity letter? I know some FRC teams have become an official sport. I don't know what it's like for you. So, um, yeah. So you just don't get an on like a letter automatically by being in. It's like a point system. But you can earn so it. So like, yeah, you can yes, earn it. Everyone earn can it. earn it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, do you think that having fluctuating team memberships is a positive? or negative uh, thing compared to like a team that's always been like the same set of members? Um, I mean, I think I can go both ways. Personally, I feel like it's mostly positive though, um, where, you know, if, if everybody's really motivated and you're working well together, then the team roster will really never change. Like largely for Hydra, the team roster hasn't really changed with the exception of, you know, new rookies coming in to replace people graduating. Um, sure. Just because we've become like a tight knit group. Um, and the mentors won't really come in and change rosters unless there's like huge conflicts, like personal issues or 
just mm. relationship problems, yeah. Um, yeah. that type of thing. And I don't know. I feel like it makes everybody even more motivated. Like, you know, if they're not going to be putting out the effort, then, you know, there's a chance they get moved. And so people are motivated to make sure they stay on the team that they're working with. Sure. So like and uh, one thing I wanted to uh, ask also was, like, how do you guys, like, pass on knowledge from, like, the previous seniors into, like, next year's? Like, do you guys have any, like, code databases or, like, CAD databases or anything like that? Um, yeah, actually, yeah. at the beginning of every season, we have a rookie camp. Um, oh, okay. that we do and so each year you know all the veterans in the all the leadership in charge of the rookie camp will get together mm -hmm. and we'll actually create a game um inspired mm -hmm. by like previous year's games um right and then task the rookies with you know building a robot to compete um and you know within that we also give like basic cad training fabrication training with like shop equipment um basic like design principles um, and like hardware basics, software basics, all these like marketing and, things, um, just to really that, get them geared up. So yeah, that's over the summer? Uh, yeah, that'll be over the summer. That's actually happening right now with all of our rookies for the organization. Oh, awesome. And to add on to that, yeah, too, we also have like our past like software from years before if we want to show our rookies like, hey, like this is how we implemented like PID last year and just sort of teach them the concepts. And like last year, we also sort of did CAD challenges from previous years and just like design a robot for R01, you design a robot for R02, and then we just all critique mm -hmm. them, sort of weigh out the pros and cons of each design. Oh, cool. So at the end of this camp, is that when rookies decide which team they get filtered into, or is there like a whole interview process, or how does that work out? Um, so yeah. there's, a, there's an application process to get into the organization in the first right. place. Um, and so, you know, applicants are admitted based on a point system, um, based on, you know, how well the mentors score their essays, um, score like, I think GPA is a factor, um, you know, teacher and like previous coach recommendations if they were in FTC before and things like that. Um, and then once they get in, all of the rookies are kind of put into this draft system um, where all the project managers and the student leadership for each of the teams kind of gets together and uh, rookies are picked based on how many team members are remaining on the teams and the people with like the least remaining members start first um, and they basically just go through all of the applicants um, like uh, like an NBA NFL draft like a yeah, draft like any pro sports team <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of funny when you think about it but I mean it tends to work in terms of balancing teams so That's yeah it's like you process. analyze like well, I just had three seniors who graduated last year, uh, like on hardware. So I'm going to need a lot of hardware people. So you just sort of prioritize and you just start looking through people's like hardware and experience. You can read all of their essays too, like you said, and you can just sort of see what type of people are like through their essays and just see if you would think personally that you're a good fit just from seeing that. Oh, it's yeah. just like searching for a job and searching for the right applicant. Yeah. And so, yeah, so because of that system, I think a lot of teams are able to find team members that they're happier with as opposed to they were just assigned randomly. Yeah. So uh, how many hours per week do you guys spend on your robots? So uh, Vibrobots as a whole requires every single member to be at least in the shop, at least like in the lab, at least three hours per week at a minimum. And then the Texas law forbids us from being in there more than eight hours. <laughs> so, eight hours a week. Wow. Yeah, eight hours a week. Oh, but yeah, wow. you can always take the robot home and work outside of it. Oh, like okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. So, so you guys have probably a check-in, check-out process, probably? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we have, have a fingerprint scanner to check in and check out. <laughs> oh, okay. my. Nice, fancy. <laughs> super legit people, folks, right here. Super legit. <laughs> they what have a punch clock. <laughs> what does collaboration between your teams look like? Like all the Viperbots teams? Um, I mean... I mean yeah, through the course of the year, there's um, it's kind of funny because there's very little like collaboration um, unless a team like really needs help with like you know figuring something out or like they're they're pretty green and you know they're not really that experienced and they need help figuring out like how to string a lift or something like especially like groups of rookies um, or like first year members. But yeah, aside from that, there's each team really acts as like their own independent body. Everybody kind of tries to stay out of each other's way. They don't really want to share too much information with one another <laughs> just to make sure that everybody's unique. Oh, interesting. So yeah, um, pretty much. Um, another question is, I mean, 
I don't think you guys have a really high rate of teams that go to Worlds, but, like, obviously every team doesn't make Worlds. So, like, what do those teams do, like, once the season is over? Or, like, before, yeah, like, so, between, yeah. Um, Those teams, like, after they season end, their season ends, they can pretty much just do whatever they want. So they still can use their budget from the season, and they can continue to develop the robot, just sort of seeing the meta. We've had people, like, teams who haven't qualified in the past just keep doing that. Or you can have the team just developing new concepts. So, for example, like this past year, 11, 503 Hyperfang, after they were eliminated, um, they started doing something really cool with a differential swerve. And they had like a tiny little cardboard box on the differential <laughs> swerve that just moved super fast around the field. So teams can just do that if like they don't qualify. It's just up to their own interpretation. So how does budgeting work? Because yeah. like, how do how do you guys split funds? Do you guys fundraise for yourself? Is there like a general fund that each team gets? What does that look like? Yeah. So each team, so each team just as a general gets three around three thousand dollars to spend per robot per season, and basically every member of Viperbots has to pay an initiation fee, so like a participation fee, and that's like one third of the budget of the org as a whole, and then another third. Uh, for our budget comes from school grants, district grants, state grants, first grants. And then the final third of that funding comes from fundraisers, which we have like a giant fundraiser around like November, late November, early December. And we just fundraise from there. But then those fundraise, like the money fundraise is split evenly among the teams. I know you guys uh, talked about having like routers and 3D printers and stuff. So like what exact, what tools do you guys have access to uh, in your workshops? Um, yeah, so we have access to these three CNC routers. Um, I think we have a few 3D printers as well in the CAD room. Um, we have a room full of computers um, that all have CAD software. So they all have Autodesk loaded up. We can just go in there and CAD. Um, Aside from that, yeah. it's kind of like standard bandsaw, horseback saw, drill press, um, dremels, just the whole shebang. I think in the new building, I think they've added like a powder coat oven <laughs> thing. Oh my god! Wow. Uh, I don't know if they're looking at laser cutters, but I think Mr. Allen mentioned something like that. He's our head member, <laughs> but we'll we'll have to see if that all pans out this year again. We have no idea what that's going to look like, but hopefully. Awesome. And so how do people decide between going to FRC or FTC? You guys have an FRC team, Swiperbots Valor, um, and they've been very successful in the past. Um, what? How do they decide between the two? So um, basically, uh, like again, like it's just personal choice. So a lot of, I think a lot of teams sometimes have it sort of as FTC as a feeder system for FRC. But basically at our school, it's not like that. It's like if you want to do FRC and like instead of FTC or, or you want to try FTC after doing FRC, like you can just do that. And then the application process, you can choose to apply to either FTC or FRC and just choose from there in the personal choice. And if you make the FRC team. Oh, yeah. interesting. So I think we'll start asking some audience questions now. So Apple by 43 in the chat asks, um, if the division finals upset hadn't occurred in Houston Jemison last year, how do you think the 69-29, 71-61 combo would have fared in finals versus 31-01 and 50-64? I mean, I think it's very hard to see because I mean, thirty one oh one and Aperture were all and Cobalt Colts they were all just a great alliance as a whole. So right. I think it still would have been very tough for us to beat them because they were amazing. They're the world champions, and it would have been a great match to watch, and it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. I think there would have been a little bit more like robot interaction because I think that was more our style of play, our alliance style of play mm -hmm. personally. But it still, would, I think yeah. it still would have been really close. Jose Bobelli uh, asks, how do you choose when to start a new Viperbots team? Um, so that decision is headed off by the faculty mentors, typically, um, where they look at like the applicant pool and they'll look at you know how much funding they're allotted from the district, because the district itself does fund um, our teams. And so you know they'll, they'll just take a look at those types of factors. Um, and kind of figure it out from there. I'm not exactly sure about the exact process because um, it's pretty much a well-kept secret by the mentors, but mm -hmm. it's factors like that that they've mentioned before. So uh, FTC3208 underscore FRC568 says, uh, do you find you often choose other teams that are part of the program during alliance selections? Um, um, so like Sam said earlier, 
we're all part of the same organizations, but we're all different teams. So like, even though like we're always playing to win, so we're always going to pick the team that's best available for us to pick at that time. And so like, if that happens to be a Viperbot team, we'll pick them. But if that isn't a Viperbot team, we'll pick them too. It's just who's the best fit for our alliance in that moment. Yeah, sure, sure. For most teams. And that's very important, I think, throughout our organization. It's always play to win. Like, no matter if you're going against a friend or something, you're always playing to win. <laughs> All right. Kate329 asks, how do your outreach efforts uh, vary on different Viperbots teams? Do Viperbots teams collaborate with each other on outreach projects? Uh, yes, that's a good question. So, you know, throughout the year, sometimes there's like one or two org-wide events where you know, the, the org as a whole will go to a company or something, or like the the whole of Viperbots will be invited somewhere like Amazon. And so, you know, a lot of teams, like they can just choose to send certain members to that outreach. Um, but for the most part, aside from those like one or two events, every single outreach done by Viperbots teams is, you know, looked for and like found and done independently of one another. Um, teams don't really like to share the outreach between each other, similar to like a lot of hardware things and design and software. Um, and again, it just makes sure that everybody is kind of keeping to be an independent body. Yeah, cause, uh, like adding on to that, we don't try to share outreach events because ultimately we're going to go to the same competition and we'll have the same judges. So we just show up and we have the same outreach events. <laughs> it wouldn't reflect good upon each individual team. <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Tacklebat asks, can people do both, both FRC and FTC? Uh, no, they have to choose between the programs when they apply. And uh, so Jose Bobelli asks, uh, how does the team dynamic work? Does everybody work on the engineering notebook? How do you divide people into all these sub teams? And uh, one thing I want to ask, add to that is like, how does the organization structure work with like mentors and uh, alumni and things like that? Okay, yeah, so... so I, I, yeah, I can start off by answering the first part of the question if Sam wants to add on. It's like, so when we don't want to force anyone in robotics to do something they don't want to do, I think that's just personally like really bad. And I think that's the sentiment throughout all of our org. So at the beginning of the season, when you have like a rookie, you ask like, hey, what are you interested in? Like, do you want to do software, hardware, CAD, uh, engineering notebook? And so it just sort of choosing that and that's how you decide how to work on. And then for things such as the engineering notebook, I think at least on our team, at least on other Viperbots team from what I've heard, it's more evenly split among the team members. We don't have any dedicated EN sub team members that just work on it. And it's just added to it whenever you can to make it look good. Yeah. And then going back to, you know, your add on specifically, um, the, in terms of the mentor structure, the, um, the mentors kind of, we have three head faculty mentors or advisors, I guess, for the organization. Um, and they deal with like the district and like in terms of funding um, and getting all the teams registered and things. Um, but after that, it's basically all of the teams are led by students. Um, there's very little hands-on interference by the mentors. Um, all of the decisions made, you know, in terms of hardware, software marketing are all done by students. Um, oh, so awesome. it's it's pretty cool because you know we really get a chance to just do what we want to do. Um, yeah. 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 And okay. so sort of like the only thing the mentors do is like we have around a forty minute meeting at the start of each week, and we just sort of recap what we did the last week to the mentor, what we plan on doing the future week, and just make sure that we're on plan mm -hmm. to reach the goals that we set out for ourselves. Awesome. So uh, Tacklebat also asks, uh, do you host off-season FTC events other than your rookie camp? Do you host open scrimmages and do you have any connections to FLL teams or events? Um, so uh, we don't like, we don't officially host like something annually, like open scrimmages every year. Like it's more like if it happens, it happens type of thing. Like, hey, like we have like time, like we'd love it. You could just come down and we just have like a nice scrimmage. Um, and then sort of, I'm not sure if it counts like preseason, but like at our kickoff event, like last year, uh, the Iron Eagles, they had like a little robot Olympics at the kickoff events, which had like robots, like doing like running in circles or doing like tug of war. And that was pretty cool to see. So I'm not sure if that counts. Then. Awesome. Caitlino Penguino asks, do you have internal scrimmages with your teams? Uh, yes, we do. Leading up to every league meet and competition, there are internal scrimmages between um, the Viperbots teams. And then normally, 
in addition to those, we also invite a lot of teams in the region, um, in the Austin metro region, to come to our lab and also scrimmage with us. Um, and it kind of gives us like a warm up, like a mock event right before, just to give everybody more practice. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we had five teams like at, at our school this year. And like, I know like organizing like 2v2s was a, a yeah. nightmare off. So like, <laughs> how do you guys go about that? Like, do you have like some special system in place or like, you know? Uh, no, so um, we use the same system that F like uh, the tournaments use for uh -huh. like organizing matching the matchmaker system. So we just put all the okay. teams that showed up to the scrimmage or all of our yeah. Viperbot teams and it just sorts out matches. And like they're always a mess though because like obviously just yeah. personally like you're never ready like on Tuesday before the competition and you're always just something's breaking, something's not working. Right. You have to find uh, substitutes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Dano Elk asks, uh, do the FTC teams try to compete at the same qualifiers or different? Um, so Austin has it where it's a league system and all teams have to compete within the league system. So we all have to compete at the Austin Metro League within those three league meets and then the championships later. But it just sort of varies if we're in the same division or not in the four divisions in those league meets. Cool. Steven Z115 asks, how did you make your web slide so fast? And that's Steven from Gluten Free, just so everybody is clear. <laughs> All right. And the next question, uh, Brian Sachs135 asks, what product does Alfonso use for his eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's going to, do you want to answer that? I don't use anything, man. <laughs> Mattress selection is my product. All and, uh, right. Great. Yeah, so I, I think that's, that's going to wrap, wrap up, up the AMA portion with Viperbots Hydra. Where can people contact you if they have any additional questions? Uh, yeah, so we have an Instagram account at team7161. We also have our email, team7161 at gmail.com. And then yeah, you can also find... It's linked through our website. Yeah, linked through our website, too. So, Great. So now awesome. we're going to jump into trivia. So now it's time for trivia. We're going to have one audience member go up against Alfonso. If you'd like to be the audience member that joins, go to our Discord and join the call-in channel Q channel, and we'll select someone from there. If our audience member beats Alfonso, they get a $90 Amazon gift card. So we're going to start that in just a second. I'd be afraid to go against me, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to draw for that in just a second, so we'll give people just a minute uh, to do that. All right, so um, Tyler, do you want to explain how right, it's going Tyler, to work? could you draw for the person selecting? Yes, we will uh, draw for the person selecting in just a moment. Uh, the fun jackpot is now worth $5 million in the year 2050. Hey, that's possible, so... You never know. Uh, so once again, uh, call in channel Q, uh, and we'll drag in the show prep. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to draw in just a minute. So hold on. Uh, and tough. we're going to draw, bring somebody in here, and we're going to bring in number four, which is uh, Tej9872. So Tej, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Awesome, man. Why don't you introduce yourself? And I'm going to assume you're on 9872. Yes. All Perfect. Right. Is your name um, Tej? Is that it? Oh, Tage. Sorry. Tage. Okay. Sorry, man. I just want to make sure we get that right out of you. So, <laughs> um, so real quick, let's explain how trivia is going to work uh, for everybody in the audience. Uh, once again, uh, if it does go to the year 2050, it will be worth $5 million. So just you know, think about that. <laughs> a little investment for the future uh, for things. But you're going to have five questions uh, that we're going to ask you uh, that Abbas is going to be asking you. Uh, you have an opportunity to uh, answer that question. If you don't know, you can pass and we'll come back to it. However, if you pass a second time, that is uh, going to be what? Uh, we take uh, so once again uh, you can pass once and we'll come back again now here's a trick though is that the tiebreaker and you're going to be going going against Alfonso here is time so if you're one of those uh, people trying to type in stuff really quick guess what that's probably going to go against you and by the way we know when you do that so uh, so uh, once again answer as quickly as you can as we'll go through uh, with trivia coming up here so with that said uh, is it, uh, sorry Tej is that correct uh, Tage. Tage. It, it, I'm horrible with names. I'm sorry. Just like Elon Island and everybody else out there, right? So, all right. So, uh, Abbas, are you ready? We're going to ask that Alfonso takes off his headphones, by the way, so we can't hear uh, anything for these questions. Tyler, can you hear me? Muted. Yep, I can hear you. All right. Here. So, hold Alfonso, on. Alfonso, can you take off your headphones? 
I gotta make sure Alfonso uh, is, not, is or is not able yep. to hear. Perfect. All right, then we'll give Alfonso okay. a big wave as we go through. So take it away, Abbas. All right, in Relic Recovery, what was the most amount of glyphs scored by a single team in Autonomous during a match? Six. Okay, what is the name of the second FTC game? Ass. Okay, what was the name? What was the official name of the gold cube and silver ball scoring elements in Rover Ruckus? Minerals. Okay, who was the Champions Award winner at the 2020 VMTI? Astromex. Okay, name one team from the Alliance at the Detroit World Championship that cleared the whole crater in a Rover Ruckus match. A6 AD crack and pinion. Okay. okay, what is the name of the second FTC game? Quad Quandry. Okay, I think that's all five questions. Are we ready for Alfonso? Yeah. Sure. Okay, Alfonso, in Relic Recovery, what was the most amount of glyphs scored by a single team in Autonomous during the match? Six. What is the name of the second FTC game? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm scared. Okay, what was the official name of the gold cube and silver scoring, uh, ball scoring elements in Rover Ruckus? Was it not gold and silver? Wait, what? <laughs> Alright, skip. Okay, who was the Champions Award winner at the 2020 VMTI? Oh, it was, uh, it was 8644 brain, uh, Brainstormers, right? No. Okay, name one team from the Alliance at the Detroit World Championship that cleared the whole crater in a Rover Ruckus match. Uh, 11-11-5, Moon Free. Okay. Uh, so what is the name of the second FTC game? I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's your... Okay, that's yeah. your second pass. What was the official name of the gold cube and silver ball scoring elements in Rover Ruckus? I'm trying to think. Yeah, I always call them golden silver. Okay, I that's never time. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go through <laughs> these one by one. We'll uh, go through the uh, answers. Gosh, darn it. All right, one by one, we'll go through I'm the answers on here, and uh, we'll we'll go on through. I'm going to read these off uh, just for sake of time on here. So, first question in relic recovery. What was the most amount of glyphs scored by a single team in an autonomous match? Uh, caller said six, and Alfonso said six, so one to one. Not bad. All right. What was the name of the second FTC game? Uh, hanging around was the answer. Unfortunately, quad, quad quandary and I don't know were the answers, so those are both incorrect. <laughs> one to one. Uh, what was the official name of the gold, cube, and silver ball scoring elements in Rober Ruckus? A caller said minerals, and uh, Afonso said, I, and I don't know, it has a lot. <laughs> guess what? Minerals are the correct answer, two to one. <laughs> no. Who was the uh, Champions okay, Award winner at the 2020 VMTI? The caller said Astromex. Afonso uh, said uh, 8644. Astromex is correct, three to one. And name one team from the Alliance Detroit World Championship that cleared the whole crater in a Rover Ruckus match. And our caller said 8680. Alfonso said gluten free 11115. 8680 is correct. Four to one. Oh. Okay. okay that's a winner. Kind of Holy cow. $90, man. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. Oh, oh, that was pretty hard. Alfonso, <laughs> one correct. Come on, man. It's a disappointing performance. 
thought the minerals won. I thought that was a little bit too obvious. I'm sort of sad that one out of my head. Awesome. All right, well, I'm congratulations. Uh, once again, shoot me a PM. Uh, we'll get all that stuff set up for you. That means our jackpot's going to reset down to $10 on Tuesday, uh, and it will keep climbing back up. Congratulations once again. Uh, hey, we'll give you a shout. Uh, anything you want to see on air, what do you want to see right now, man? Big winner speech. Come on. Uh, I'd like to thank... Uh, not sure who to thank. Yeah, I guess I'll thank myself. One question right oh, uh, thanks, Alfonso. <laughs> <laughs> All right, congratulations, man. Thanks for playing. Uh, Shoot me a PM. We'll get everything uh, set up on there. Awesome. Winner, guys. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.